The missing and murdered indigenous women's movement has made strides in recent years raising awareness of the problem. Factors like high rates of violence against native women have led tribal leaders and policymakers to call MMIW, as it's often known, a crisis. We're finally starting to see some data, and it's jarring. The Urban Indian Health Institute pointed out in 2018 that New Mexico has the highest number of cases in the country. Albuquerque and Gallup alone have a combined caseload of 62 missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. In June, a report by UNM's Native American Budget and Policy Institute sought to better understand the issues here and gave advocates a way to keep this in the news. Antonio Gonzalez sits down with two women involved in the movement. Joining me now are Christina Castro with the Three Sisters Collective, a Pueblo women's grassroots group, and Cheyenne Antonio, the project coordinator on sex trafficking initiatives with the Coalition to Stop Violence Against Native Women. Thank you both for being here to talk about this sensitive and complex topic, which is touching every tribal community across the United States. Thank you. Thank you. And Cheyenne, I'll start with you. The coalition works on various levels, including with government, with tribal governments, with law enforcement, with grassroots groups and families. How do you, how does the coalition go about talking to people about this issue and getting over some of the stigmas? Um, we start by um, educating um, at the coalition. Um, we focus on education, policy, technical assistance, and supporting the community. Um, and so, as far as like bringing awareness to MMIW, the ways that we've started is talk about the systematic oppression that Native um, and Pueblo, Pueblo, Native nations and Pueblos experience. Um, as far as like educating, we we um, educate on violence as a structure um, and not an event, which is one of. Um, uh, a, a researcher named um, Patrick Wolf has once stated, and since since there, when 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 um, a couple of um, my coworkers and I, when we were really talking about this, um, we were talking about ways that as Native people, on on like time and time again, that we as Indigenous peoples, as the first people, like the caretakers of this land and the community, um, that we have to understand how sh violence works in our communities and how we can bring more awareness to it. Um, and so we started talking about like settler colonialism um, and ways that um, our systems have to adopt the Western system. So our, our nations have to adopt what um, the federal government is doing or we have to abide by federal governments um, when we know for a fact that that's not working. Um, and so in ways that we've talked about it is really just um, bringing on to like what happens to the people happens to the land. And so we definitely um, integrate that because we see it in our homes, um, we see it in border towns, and um, now it's just, there's a name to it. So MMIW, it's a, it's a current violence that we've all experienced since um, the United States was, um, Forcefully, forcefully put their systems onto us, um, and so we talk about like MMIW in the stance of the Long Walk, MMIW um, during the U.S. assimilation period, and then now um, the U.S. Um, now these colonial structures that we have to abide by, and now that we see the gaps and we see more sisters um, missing and murdered, or oftentimes the cases aren't being heard. Um, so in a way, we, we, it's, a, it's a huge branch, um, it's a huge tree to really like go to the roots and really figure it out and work, on, work our way up. And Christina, with um, your work at the grassroots level, why is that important at, at the tribal community level? Um, well, um, I think it's important that um, women come together to start uh, recognizing that we have to uh, support each other through what is I would call an epidemic and what has become an epidemic in our indigenous communities. So I think a lot of times violence happens in isolation. And so people who are victims of violence often think that they're alone or it's only happening to them. But as you said, this is a part of a systematic culture of violence. So once we begin to understand how that plays out in our community through education, through coming together, through awareness, through um, action like marching or events that bring attention to MMIW, I think we start to see that together we have power. And so individually, like I was expressing to you earlier, we may feel fearful 
of uh, our environment and the circumstances that we are indigenous women and being vulnerable in um, our modern um, legal system, we are vulnerable, we are um, prey, so to speak. So how do we begin to mobilize to begin to empower women, whether it's a self-defense course, whether it's mobilizing at the roundhouse, um, whether it's you know coming together collectively to have an event like we're gonna have on August 16th at the Santa Fe Indian Center to bring our community together, together to hold space and to acknowledge our, our stolen and disappeared women and to understand that as a community, building each other up um, builds us all up and um, empowers others to um, begin to see, like you said, there's gaps in our system and where we individually and collectively can come together and to start addressing these issues that are affecting our women and children and our whole community as a whole. Um, and um, with that, we can be empowered to make a positive change because we can wait for our legal systems to catch up, but we may be waiting for a long time. And that being said, what can we do at a grassroots local level to affect the change that we want to see in our communities? And that comes with building women up too and, and building women's voice and strength and solidarity because we're also a part of a culture of violence that encourages women to not be in solidarity. So um, even that is a political act of resistance against that culture of violence. And when it comes to the families, you know, families are going through a lot of pain. They're also working their way through with law enforcement and maybe the judicial uh, system. So how do you deal with families and try to work with them so they're not feel, so they don't feel like their relatives and their loved ones are forgotten? Um, we've um, recently at the, um, <clears throat> sorry, at the, with the Navajo Nation, they recently had a MMIW relatives forum. And one of our relatives suggested a grieving process of what it would look like in supporting that family. And so each family is different, right? And, and the type of violence is different. And oftentimes um, with the Urban Institute, Urban Native Health, Indian, wait, wait, Urban Indian Health Institute um, report of MMIW, oftentimes it is Native mothers who experience a lot of violence. It's one of the Native mothers experience the most brutal violence within that report that was given by sovereign bodies. And so um, as part of a grieving process, it's important to have a safety plan um, as into which FBI agent or BIA agent works best with Native communities. Um, which um, which group will is able to bring a voice to that community? So, like Lori Alcinogeny, for an example, um, she was murdered by a Winslow police officer. And so, what we've seen there is like grassroots, such as like the Red Nation, um, the family called Red Nation, and sh they have they held actions outside of the police department, um, and really giving the voice back to the family. And I think that's what is most important, and what is very. Um, um, empowering for grassroots organizing is to really assist those families who are oftentimes silenced by the system because oftentimes when a woman becomes missing or murdered it's really hard to find resources and so um, I think it's important that communities utilize um, a safety plan and just like acknowledging which officers are working on the case, um, acknowledging the tribal governor or the Pueblo governor or the Navajo Na or the Na nation leaders, sorry, um, nation leaders, um, and then also um, advocates. I think it's really, we at CSVNW think it's really important that um, there are advocates there that are assisting the family in whatever way is possible. And I know there's a lot of, um, or there's not a lot, there is a resource such as the Crimes, Victims, and Reparations Commission, um, CVRC. Um, they assist families um, as long as, our, they assist families with like funeral costs, mm -hmm. they assist families with therapy, like if they need that funding, um, that is a state tool that is um, used for families. And so um, safety plan is definitely, um, a way to go and a part of the grieving process. And, and healing not only for the families, but the community as well, the tribes, um, individuals maybe who have had some past experience. Um, you know, 
this, this movement has really become also part of healing. And Christina, the Three Sisters Collective um, has held, a, like you said, a ribbon making class and some other events, but you're also addressing it through the arts and music. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so um, one of the projects that we're working on is an MMIW um, themed musical compilation CD that's gonna be uh, debuted at our August 16th event at the Santa Fe Indian Center. And that CD is called Spirit Line. And um, that basically we, um, uh, one of our um, collaborators put out a call to Indian country, basically asking for women spoken word artists um, to um, contribute to this um, compilation. So there's music, there's spoken word, there's excerpts of interviews that um, Clara Natanaba conducted with various people who are involved in the mo movement. So we're gonna basically press that CD, make a select number of copies. We're gonna have it um, performances at this event on August 16th that will highlight those performers in the CD. And the all the proceeds are gonna go to the Sovereign Bodies Institute, which is um, soon to be Dr. Anita Lou Casey, who is um, her dissertation and, and doctoral work is creating an MMIW database for um, communities. Uh, and I don't know if that's just in the United States or if that extends to Canada, you might know. Yeah. Canada too. Yeah. But again, you know, um, going back that um, even though MMIW is a movement that was started probably, I think, in Canada um, over the last decade, um, women in um, Indian country in the Americas have been going missing for a long time. And if you look at um, like uh, back in the 80s and 90s, you had NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, which allowed American corporations to go into Mexico and uh, south of the border and um, create big businesses. And then you started to see women go missing. So this has been going on for a long time. And it's also, I think it's important to acknowledge that connection that um, our women have been going missing since 1492. And even though MMIW is a new name for um, a newer movement, or a newer face of the movement, this is something that has been an issue from the beginning. So, um, yeah. And uh, Cheyenne, um, you know, this is definitely an issue that is important to your group. Just uh, quickly, how can people get involved, the public, if they're interested in any of the work that the coalition is doing? Yeah, it's um, definitely right now um, for tribal consultation, definitely. Um, inviting your tribal or Pueblo leader to, co to attend those meetings because oftentimes um, we're not at the table. Um, so really if you have an opportunity, I guess that goes for anyone, um, whether you're a leader or not. Um, if you have a relative that is missing or your family has experienced that type of violence, definitely be at the table. Um, because we need more brown faces <laughs> at the table and women. Um, we need more women, we need more trans women um, to definitely speak up for our individuals because at the coalition, we, one of our sayings is that silence is not consent. And so definitely being a good relative and speaking up um, even when it's scary. Um, so definitely that and um, go to your community meetings, your chapter house meetings, um, any gatherings that is happening in your community and, and voice out um, for your relatives because our relatives who have gone don't have their voice anymore. And if, if it wasn't, you know, I, my family has experienced a lot of, um, of, of losing relatives, um, specifically women and we never knew what happened. Um, we still, till this day, don't know what happened. And so it's important to keep, keep right. going. Right, yeah. Well, thank you both thank for you. being here today. Thank you. Thank you.